Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's problem of the week. So for the full problem and the solution transcript, you can feel free to check the description of this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, so for this week's problem of the week, we're going to do a little bit of calculus uh, three, maybe two review, and we're going to do some volume integrals. Uh, so uh, this is really important because um, it's very key to know how to just pull those volume integrals from uh, the back of your head, or that, or just derive them on the spot, because it's not that hard. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to confirm uh, what we know about cylinders and spheres and that their volumes are what they are. Um, so we're going to carry out the calculations and see if they match what we expect them to be. Um, so first, we're going to start by calculating the volume of a cylinder using triple, a triple integral for the volume. And the important thing to notice here is that, yes, you can use Cartesian coordinates, but it's a lot, a lot, a lot easier with cylindrical coordinates. Uh, I'm going to spar start by looking at this... Um, volume integral that I've shown you, it's that you take the triple integral and over dv. Well, dv for Cartesian coordinates is really easy. Uh, simply, dv is equal to dx, dy, dz. How did I get that? Um, well, dv is a small unit of volume. It's very simple for a Cartesian coordinate because you just get this little small cube thing of volume where you can just say this is dx, small change in dx, dy, and dz. Uh, and, of course, the volume of a cube based times width times height, dx, dy, dz, becomes your d-volume unit. Uh, for a cylinder, it's a little trickier. But if you ever need help um, thinking about how to get this, um, just remember, cylindrical coordinates are using r, theta, z. Uh, so just construct a small piece of volume with r, theta, and z. And that isn't too hard. So I'm going to draw it again, even though I've drawn it, drawn it over there already. Uh, but you get kind of a more curved thing because we are in cylindrical coordinates, um, so it's not going to be a perfect box. Um, so what we get here, um, this is going this little bit right here. This is going to be a small change in r. We're going to call that dr. Um, there's a small um, difference in how far the radius is reaching out um, there. This height, very simply, is dz. Uh, and unlike dr or unlike r and z um, or dr and dz. Theta isn't a length. I can't say this is d theta because that isn't d theta. d theta is a change in angle. Um, what this is, however, though, if you know um, your circles, um, this is r d theta. It is this very, very, very small arc length that is going to describe uh, this part of the shape. Well, very simply, dv is then going to be equal to r dr dz d theta for the same reason that um, dv was dx dy dz. Um, if we look at this uh, diagram over here, um, hopefully that can be something you remember or is easier to remember than just RDR, um, d, 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 d theta. Uh, that might actually be more useful for, for uh, spherical coordinates because this isn't too hard to remember, but yeah. Now we're going to use this. We're going to use this in our triple integral. That's going to go over this um, cylinder for uh, radius r and height h. And uh, so we are going to think r is going to go from 0 to r because we have radius r and we want to sweep that entire volume. Uh, z, z is going to go from 0 to h uh, because, again, we want to sweep that entire height. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Theta goes around. We want to make sure we're getting all that. So uh, hence, 0 to 2 pi. OK, so this is a pretty, pretty gentle integral to solve, so I'm going to go ahead and um, do that. So I went ahead and evaluated that first part. I'm going to plug in 0 to r, and of course you get capital R squared over 2. Uh, next, I've set dz as the second um, part that we're integrating out. So we're just going to evaluate r squared over 2 times z, from z equals 0 to z equals h, uh, which is a nice little h out. Um, and then same thing with theta. Um, and we're going to evaluate r squared over 2, h theta from theta equals 0 to 2 pi. Um, 0 is going to cancel out, just like it always does and we expect it to. Um, but then 2 pi, 2 is going to uh, cancel with this 2. As a result, we get pi r squared h. And that is exactly what we expected for the volume of a cylinder, um, just from taking middle school math or something. Um, pi r squared is the area of um, 
the base, and I guess the top too, um, multiplying by height will get you the entire volume of the cylinder. And by evaluating this triple integral, we get the same result that we expected, which is good. <laughs> Okay, next I'm going to move on to the sphere. And um, the sphere is going to be um, a similar story where we construct a dv as first because it's not as simple as um, dx, dy, dz. It's a little more complicated. Um, but we can do that through the th same analysis that we had before. Uh, so that is my attempt at a sphere slice of sorts. And um, d rho is always very easy. It's just going to be this over here. Because we have our row going up here. And a small change in row is going to describe that side. OK, next, um, the next easiest one to do is to look at um, this value. And on a sphere, we are just kind of sweeping this. Um, phi usually goes from 0 to, or it doesn't usually go. It's going to go from 0 to pi in this case to sweep out the entire sphere. And when you want to measure an arc length over here, you're just going to go. Um, so again, d phi is not a length. We have to um, make that so it is a length. So what that is going to be, though, is phi d phi. Uh, the reason why that is is for the same reason why um, for our piece on the cylinder, we had to call that r d theta. This is going to be phi d phi because it's going to measure that little arc length. Um, and we're going to use that. This is phi d phi. Okay, so for the last part, it is a little tricky as well. Um, but think of the sphere um, and think of what theta actually means. Theta is going to refer to this rotation around um, a parallel to or on the xy plane. So if I have a theta here, this circle is smaller, but it's still going to go from theta equals 0 to theta equal 2 pi. So the difference here is that we have a projection and we can kind of say there's another r here, and it's, the arc length is still going to be r d theta. But what exactly is r? Well, r is going to be the projection of rho onto that circle. So what is that? Well, that's rho sine theta. Say sine phi, apologies. Um, that projection is going to be rho sine phi, sine phi. And we said that if we multiply by d theta, uh, we're going to get the arc length from that. And so that is uh, And so from here, we do have um, the volume. Uh, and that is just simply, well, uh, not as simply as Cartesian or cylindrical, but rho squared sine phi d phi d theta dr. D rho. <laughs> Sorry. OK, so from here, I'm going to do the triple integral. And that is just going to give me the volume of a sphere, or at least it should. And it will. <laughs> OK, so how do I describe limits of integration, uh, or yeah, limits of integration for a sphere? Well, um, d rho is going to go from 0 to r, um, as it is, because we want to sweep, again, the entire inside of the sphere. So we have to go from 0 to r. Um, d phi is going to describe the angle that um, we are going with the z-axis. So that is going to go from 0 to pi. Um, we are only going to sweep like this, uh, because if we were to go from 0 to 2 pi, we would double count it. And we don't want to do that. So just 0 to pi is perfectly fine. Um, theta is, go again, going to sweep uh, in kind of around in the xy plane. Um, so that is going to go from 0 to 2 pi, parallel to the xy plane, I should have said. Um, and with that, we have all the ingredients we need to evaluate a nice uh, triple integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So first step, I did the um, d rho first. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter uh, in this case. Um, sometimes it does for triple integrals, but in this case, it's not going to matter. Um, I did start with rho, though. So I'm going to plug in um, rho equals r and rho equals 0. What we're going to get is, of course, uh, r cubed over 3. All right. Uh, so next, uh, in the order that I wrote it, I wrote um, d phi. And uh, we have sine phi, and of course, uh, that means uh, that means we're going to um, evaluate negative cosine of phi, so the antiderivative, uh, from 0 to pi. 
And uh, we are going to get negative times negative 1 uh, minus negative 1. So we're going to get positive 2. Uh, next, we have theta. And that is going to be very simply evaluating this from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, and evaluating that from 0 to 2 pi, of course, gives you that wonderful 4 thirds pi r cubed that we want to see so much when we evaluate um, the volume of a sphere. And that is uh, what you get. That is what we expect to get. And that is very good that we get that. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this week's Problem of the Week. If you want to see more Problems of the Week or Advanced Knowledge Problems of the Week, feel free to click up there. If you want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, feel free to click right here. If you want to visit us on centermath.org, feel free to click down here. And if you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the top corner up there. If you click that, it should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching.